Okay. This is the third time I've tried to do this video. And the uh, first time I tried to do it, it I, I couldn't upload it because it was on Cyberlink UCAM and there was some sort of authorization problem and I hate it. And anyway, uh, this is my review of the JG manufactured uh, Softair licensed SIG 552. Now about the licensing, one thing that kind of gets me is uh, the box that it came in said Cybergun on it and the website said soft air licensed JG6 so I'm wondering who the heck actually made this because uh, I bought JG because it was JG anyway um, um, the licensing it's got the SIG arms insignia right there it says SG right there um, SG 552 slash 1 commando I don't know the licensing on here is pretty tacky considering what I paid for it. And speaking of what I paid for it, um, JG actually makes a SIG 552 that is not licensed and it costs $100, whereas this was a jaw dropping $180. And uh, it sh the cheaper one actually shoots 40 feet per second better than mine. So that's pretty disappointing. Considering it also came with a top rail, which is a $20 value, so all in all I lost about $100 on this gun. But I'm not too broken up about it because this is a great gun. Uh, I got it off evac.com and um, it's, it's a very solid gun. Uh, it's a little button right here you press, hold the stock set it up on there and then you just get a little smack on the side there and locks up real nice. You slip your thumb through here and if you want to do close quarters you can you know, choke up on it like this. And <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Uh, anyway, it's you just on this and pull it off, clicks back in. Very, very solid. Nothing about this gun rattles at all. Uh, I love it. And uh, I took notes because I had this all recorded and it was great, all my jokes were good and I had to re-record it. So uh, the hop-up is where it would, you would find, expect to find it on any airsoft gun in the receiver. Um, it's got a hop-up similar to an AUG or a G36 and uh, I, honestly, I honestly couldn't tell you which way to turn it, to turn it up and turn, to turn it down because um, I don't honestly know. Uh, I just got lucky with it and uh, just twisted it every which way and uh, shot it and it shot what I'm about to tell you it shot 330 feet per second which is pretty consistent. I've had it chrono three different places. It always shot 330 feet per second. And it's, it's pretty consistent. Consistently bad and uh, well consistently mediocre. I mean 330 feet per second is not all that impressive considering airsoft these days but um, it does however have a very unique characteristic in that it may only shoot 330 feet per second but the gun still reaches out 180 feet and I've, I've measured that out and everything. It's 180 feet maximum effective range and that's pretty crazy considering the muzzle velocity, so it's apparently got a superb hop up in it. And uh, it came with this this bottom rail right here. You can put anything you wanted on there, vertical foregrip, you know, you can put a M16 carrying handle on it, I don't know. The rail the rails are all standard. I mean uh, it's got a side rail right here, you can put a vertical foregrip and pretend you're carrying a sten or a sterling or something. But that's if you were lefty. It only came with one, it's on the right side, not on the left side. It doesn't even have a holes for one on the left side and uh, it did not come with the top rail once again money I lost on the cheaper one don't want to talk about it uh, the battery it's got a little mock screw right here what you do is you press on the back of it pull it out don't lose that pull the bottom part backwards pop the top off like that. 
really easy. That's probably one of my favorite things about this gun is how easy it is to get to the battery. Um, although it's also one of my least favorite things about the gun and that the battery compartment is so incredibly small. I mean, you see, it's it's only that big. And uh, the battery it came with was 8.4 volt, 1100 ma, and it only just fits in this battery compartment, which troubles me because I want to upgrade my battery to a 9.6, 1500 ma, a milliamp per hour, and uh, I'm not sure if it's going to fit. And if it doesn't fit, I'm just going to have to use a PEQ2 bus, and uh, honestly, I hate PEC boxes. They're ugly. They're not realistic. Um, I don't know. I hate them. So if that were to happen, I honestly may just buy a different gun and use this gun as a loaner gun. So watch eBay or Craigslist because this gun could be going for sale if my battery doesn't fit in there. But I wouldn't count on it. I love this gun. And uh, so that's, that's the battery compartment. I mean, it's got its pros and its cons. No airsoft gun's perfect. I mean, I love it. Just because it's easy to get to. Although, once again, the problem is that batteries just simply will not fit in here. Uh, if I had a long wire, it wouldn't fit in there. If it was just, you know, like, you know, three millimeters too long, it wouldn't fit in there. And, uh, sling rings. It's got a sling ring right here. It's got a sling ring right here. And it's got a sling ring right here. And that's really nice because you could pretty much come up with any sling configuration you could possibly conceive with this gun. Because it's got so many rings. And they're all very sturdy. They're full metal, except for the one on the stock. But that's molded into the stock, so it's not going anywhere. Um, the gun is all plastic, by the way, but it's very it's very heavy gauge, ABS plastic. I've dropped it before. It's, it's not a big deal. Uh, keeps the gun light, but the gun's still pretty solid, so uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, I have a one-point sling that I hook on at the rear sight sling, which is, probably, which is very conveniently uh, positioned because you can that's really where all the magic happens as far as slings go. And uh, it keeps everything from getting tangled. I don't like three-point slings because uh, uh, they, they just get all tangled, especially if they, they have that rubber weave. You know, they just stick to stuff. And if you have full gear on or something like that, they get tangled. And sooner or later, you know, you hit your dirt and your gun's like up here like this. And you're like, oh, oh, what am I going to do? Well, there is nothing you can do. Uh, what you can do with this gun, it's really cool, you could take a standard uh, double-ended two-point rifle sling and uh, hook it here and here and you could achieve the same thing that a three-point sling does without all the extra tangle uh, by hooking it here and here and if you were a righty you would throw it over your left shoulder and your head and it would sit like this and really nice. I did that with the sling it came with, which was incredibly cheap. Broke on me the second day we used it. But uh, you can find a two-point rifle sling anywhere. You know, you could just you could go dig around in your garage and you probably find one. Um, uh, the muzzle brake. I've heard stories about the um, JG Sig 552, the one I didn't get that came with the top rail, uh, that you can screw the muzzle brake off and you can put a mock silencer on there. I've tried with mine. I don't know if it can come off. I don't want to force it because if it can't come off then it just breaks something and I would not be happy about that. So for right now mine's just staying the same, which is okay because I, I kind of like the uh, triangular muzzle brake anyway. It looks kind of cool. need to paint over it. but Anyway. Not too much though because it is a law that it has to have some sort of orange on it. So keep the orange on it. Don't try to be all cool and paint it completely black so that everywhere you go you have to hide it. Because that's more suspicious than somebody running around with an orange gun is somebody running around with a completely painted gun trying to hide it. People are a little smarter than you might expect. They know you're carrying a gun. Um, my friend has an ICS. SIG 551, the SWAT one, that's, it's just a little bit longer than this, 